Hey everyone, I'm Dave and welcome to my channel. Thanks for checking this video out. It's been a while since I posted a tutorial. I've been working on a lot of things and uh, I revamped the studio that's behind me here. So I've got this new space and I'm inspired to dive back in and get creating. One of the first projects that I'm gonna take you through is a fractured echoing text effect. It's a popular look that I've seen across social media and the design industry for a while now. So I'm gonna show you my take on it, how to build it, and along the way, I'm going to teach you a number of key commands and tips and techniques. So enough chit chat. Let's go jump into Illustrator and get working. All right, here we are in Illustrator. And the first thing we need to do is to create a new document. If you've been on my channel before, you'll know I'm all about key commands. So we could go up to the menu up here and say file new, or we could just hit Command N on the keyboard to pull up the new document window. Because we're just creating vector elements, the canvas size doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use a 1920 by 1080 canvas. Feel free to use whatever size canvas you wanna work on for your project, but that's what I'm gonna to use today. No real rhyme or reason. So here we go, here's our HD canvas, and we need to add some type to it. So you can find your type tool over here in the palette, or we can press T on the keyboard to pull that up. When you click, it's gonna add some placeholder type, which we can replace with our text. So let's call this, let's type out echo effect. I'm gonna switch over to the selection tool and just scale this up like this. Could have also increased the type size up here. At this point, I'm going to change the typeface to a typeface that I use called Bison. Here's the Bison family and let's select bold. I like this look for the effect that we're creating today. If you get into something that's more like a brush script, I don't know how well it will translate, but feel free to experiment and come up with your own effect. So at the moment, this type is live, it's editable. If we hit Command Y to switch into outline mode, you'll see that there are no outlines. The type is just black and live, meaning if we switch back to the type tool, you can select and edit the, the type. For the effect that I'm going to show you today, we're going to want to outline this so that we can manipulate it with the Pathfinder. So switch back into preview mode, command Y on the keyboard is your toggle for outline preview. And we want to create outlines for this. So again, you could go into the menu and go to type create outlines, or we could use command shift O with your type selected to create outlines. Now when you switch into outline mode, you'll see that there's a series of Bezier paths and handles that have been created. And now we can manipulate this with the Pathfinder. So the first thing we wanna do is create a series of lines that we're gonna to use to chop this type up into a number of sections. You can use the line segment tool or the pen tool and just create your own line. So that's what I'm gonna do. P on the keyboard pulls up the pen tool. And then I'm gonna find a spot here that I like. I'm gonna align it to the bottom of the O, I believe. Yeah, that's a good spot. And you can see this pink line that's appeared. That's my smart guides showing me that I've aligned with the bottom section there. Command U on the keyboard toggles those on and off. But by having them on, you're gonna see a lot of these intersections and alignments that are gonna pop up. And it's handy to know where it is that you're clicking and manipulating in your project. So I have those smart guides on almost all the time. So we're gonna click once, we're gonna hold shift to create a straight line or a horizontal line, and we're gonna click over here. Now we just need to stop drawing here so we can switch tools or we can hit command shift A to deselect. And here's our first line. Now we're gonna check out what's going on with our fill and stroke up here. Because our type had been filled with black, the next object we created is also filled with black. We would just like this to be stroked so that we can see it. So we can click this icon up here that will switch our fill and stroke, or we can hit shift X and that will switch our fill and stroke. So now the path is stroked with a black stroke. We now wanna create a series of copies of this line that will intersect with our type all the way up. So I'm just gonna do this roughly. And I'm gonna hold down Option with our line selected. If you hold down Option, you'll see that the tool tip changes appearance there. It goes from that standard black arrow, the selection arrow, 
And when you hold down Option, it creates that little ghost behind. And that means wherever you click and drag this off to, it's going to create a copy. So holding down Option and then holding down Shift to constrain this to the 90 degree angle, 90 degree division, we're going to slide this up to here. And then if we hit Command D, that's going to repeat that same transformation again. So Command D is transform again. You had to have that line remaining selected for that to work. If you had it deselected, pressing Command D doesn't do anything. But with it selected, Command D will repeat the last transformation. And then once more. Now you'll see that this top line doesn't align with the top of our O, and that's where we want it to be. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick it up slide it down until we see that pink intersection pop up with our smart guides and we're going to let it go now what's ended up happening is your top section is going to be smaller in this case if it had happened the other way where the line was short and we moved it up it, that section would be larger and we don't want that we want all of these sections to be evenly distributed so what we're going to do is we're going to use a selection tool we're going to click and drag and pick up all of these lines and then because we've got the top one and the bottom one in the right spot, the right position, we wanna use the align function up here to distribute them evenly on their um, central axis. So if we click on this, everything is now gonna be evenly distributed. The same way that we did that, we can also add another division or two if we wanted to. So if we create a copy of this down here, we now have an extra division, maybe even make it two just for this example. And then we could pick all of these up and use that same distribute function, and we would get all of our lines distributed in an even way here. But for this demonstration, four sections chopped up out of this type will be good. You can use more or less depending on the way that you're feeling. So now we've got our type that's outlined and we've got a series of lines here. We're gonna pick up all of these and we're gonna switch over into our Pathfinder. And we're gonna use the divide Pathfinder here and it's gonna chop everything up for us. You can't see a result until you switch into outline mode or hover over a section. And you'll see what's happened is that all of your type has been chopped up and there's also some intersections that happened in between. With our direct selection tool, A on the keyboard would have pulled that up for you, you're able to pick up these sections that are in fact empty. And you'll see that they have no fill or no stroke. And now we wanna be able to select all of them. So you could go through here and tediously pick them all up and delete them yourself, or we can use this little selection trick that I use all the time in Illustrator. Once you have one shape with the fill and stroke selected that you're looking to, to match, you can go up to the select menu, go to the same option here and click same um, fill color, there we go. And now we've picked up all of the objects that had no fill inside of our document and we can hit delete on the keyboard to clear those. Now we should just be left with the type that we wanted. It's chopped up into these sections. At the moment, it will be grouped. So if you click on a section, it's gonna pick up all of the objects. So we can hit Command Shift G to ungroup them or you can find that in the object menu with your group selected. It's gonna be right there, ungroup. So now you can pick up all of these sections on their own individually. And what we're going to do is pick up the top three sections. Here we go. So the top three have been picked up. We're gonna use that option trick again to create a copy. We're gonna hold shift to constrain so it goes straight up and it's not gonna come offline on an angle like that. So shift, and we're gonna find a spot that we like the spacing and we're gonna let go. We're gonna do the same thing with the top two find that spot that we like, and then finally the top section on its own. And then there's the top of our echo effect. From here, we can repeat the process with the bottom three sections. Find a spot that we like the alignment. The bottom two. And then the bottom one. So that's the rough structure. Now we're gonna to get to styling this a little bit. We want our main copy in the middle to remain filled with black. And we want the upper and lower sections to be outlined. So they're gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit more subtle. So again, we're gonna switch the 
fill in the stroke, so shift X will achieve that. And then we're gonna go into our stroke palette and I want the strokes to be aligned to the inside of the objects versus right now they are aligned to the middle of the path. So let's align that to the inside. And you'll see what's going on here is that because these are all divided up into sections, you're getting an extra line in the middle that we wanna get rid of. So you can use our selection tool, click and drag and pick up all of these shapes and then use the pathfinder to merge them all back together. Same thing here. And then we're gonna repeat that on the bottom. So that cleans all of that up. And then finally, you can do the same thing with your middle text. Depending on how you're gonna work with this, having them broken up like that may cause you problems down the line. So cleaning it up like that might be the safe bet. And then there you go. That's the echo effect that I was gonna teach you guys today in this tutorial. I think it looks really cool when you start to work with this in Photoshop. You can see some textures showing through. There's a bunch of different ways that you can style this up, but that's the core effect. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was clear and concise and didn't skip over anything. If I did, obviously let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to help you out with whatever issues you were having with the tutorial. If there's any suggestions for concepts that you'd like me to teach in the future, again, drop a comment down below. I'd really appreciate that. I've done a number of viewer requested tutorials and it's always great to be able to help you guys with the projects that you're working on. That being said, if you liked what you saw today, really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Cheers.